Welcome to Wednesday, April 30th. Here we are, the last day of April 2025. This podcast brought to you by ConverseCountyTourism.com. Feel the energy of Converse County. Explore Douglas's Railroad Heritage, Ayers Natural Bridge, and the Jackalope Legend. Glen Rock boasts scenic trails, dinosaur history, and small town charm. Plan your visit at ConverseCountyTourism.com. Well, there's quite a bit to talk about as we uh, head into the next few days. We've got a cold front coming through today that will affect us today and tomorrow. Nice big warm up Friday through Sunday. Then we've got this big storm system, slow moving low coming off the West Coast that we'll be dealing with next week. First and foremost, there's a front again bringing areas of rain and snow to parts of Southern Montana, Northern Wyoming, Idaho, all the way back into the Northern Great Basin this morning. This front will move north to south and will affect the area with cooler temperatures, showers and thunderstorms today, and some showers and thunderstorms behind this front will develop on Thursday in some areas, especially east of the divide. Then southwest flow aloft brings in warmer air from the deserts and temperatures will be warming up rapidly Friday through Sunday. That warm up is because of this, a large low moving into California. So at first the low brings warmth. Then as it gets closer to the four corners and wants to jump the divide, it will bring coolness. And we'll take a look at that here in a moment. Yesterday started off with some patchy low clouds and fog in some areas, as you can see there near the Glen Rock area. But got yesterday got really interesting for cloud watchers in some areas, especially along the Colorado Front Range and into the southern areas of southeastern Wyoming as we had a little bit of convergence with moisture, a little disturbance aloft and a decent amount of heating that got some cloud build up and some pretty uh, good looking clouds began to form late yesterday afternoon in the region. Some of you may have even gotten rain out of some of these. Some of these mainly just gave you Virgus some sprinkles and some wind. But a nice shot of this building cumulus cloud that got a nice anvil and turned into some cumulus congestus and eventually cumulonimbus as it grew up a little bit bigger. And what's interesting about this photo and this particular cloud is it was viewed by a lot of folks at different angles. Jan Curtis got a great shot of this cloud as it built just a little bit later. And then even better is a time lapse of this as it came together along the Cheyenne Ridge. This is looking south and you can see that same cloud being uh, built, growing and expanding. But it, you can see from the base, it just didn't have the moisture it needed to really become a good weather maker. Now, later on, as this buildup moved north, it did encounter some better moisture and ended up producing some rain as it went up north. But a great shot there of it building and growing and coming together. And you don't get this very often, but from the seat of an airplane, that same cloud building. So we got a great angle, great angles of that cloud building up as we went on through. So from 20,000 feet, nice shot of that same cloud right along the Colorado Wyoming border. So we got all perspectives on that one. And then this was the result for a lot of you, it looked like it was going to rain and it may have sprinkled, but you mainly got some wind. Just really hard to overcome poor soil moisture this time of year. That's why we've got to get some soil moisture in the ground to help these showers begin to bring some of that moisture from the lower levels up into the cloud. But this is what you get as the end result when you're over a drought area. Now, they did get a little bit more formed, as you can see here, as they built and went more to the north and east. And some of these did produce some measurable rain as they got into portions of northern Laramie County, southern Platte, southern Goshen County, and into parts of the Panhandle. What we need is more moisture. Another great shot there from Muter. Love the fact that not only do we have one weather station, we got two going on here. Nice rainbow. And then after all that went through, beautiful sunset in many areas. Also, we've been talking about the heavy precipitation across parts of Montana, southern Wyoming, or rather northern Wyoming, in the Dakotas here over the last few days, and that's resulted in very, very heavy snow in the mountains. So here's a wonderful shot of kite skiing up in the western Bighorn Mountains above Lovell here. Isn't that an awesome shot there? 
There's still five to five to six feet of snow in those northern bighorns that just keeps snowing up there. And what is better than a beautiful shot like that of kite skiing? A movie of kite skiing. Thanks, Matt, for sending that in. First time I've ever gotten a video of someone kite skiing. Boy, does that look like fun. Look at all that snow. Really a great shot there. So as we get back to the weather, we're looking at easily identifying this next cold front right here. You can see the precipitation and the clouds trending southwest to northeast. Along that black line there is where we're having showers this morning. And this frontal boundary is headed south. This is the system that's still causing severe weather across the south central United States. So as this system moves south and east, it will trigger showers and thunderstorms. So you can see where the frontal boundary is as of early this morning, pushing through the Casper area behind it, right along and just behind it is where the showers and the thunderstorms will be. So at 500 millibars, you can see this upper level low causing the thunderstorms here. This system will bring northwest flow in the front on through. So it will be an active day and an active day tomorrow as well as the cool moist air east of the divide will still produce some showers and thunderstorms. The severe weather will be in northeast Texas, parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas there. General thunderstorms elsewhere in the lighter green. So between now and Friday morning, the precipitation potential looks like this. Nothing to ride home about. Once again, the areas that have been the most wet get the most moisture again, and that's going to translate south, bringing scattered showers and thunderstorms elsewhere. But you can see all the way back into the Great Basin states, all the way up into the Dakotas, it is a wide swath where there will be a chance for some shower and thunderstorm activity. And tomorrow, behind the front, not terribly cold, but a little bit on the cool side of things. So that takes us through basically the next 48 hours. Some spring weather with that frontal system coming through, and yep, a little more snow. We'll stay up into the high country. Notice the snow levels are pretty high, but tonight, especially this evening and tonight, especially in northern Colorado, southern Wyoming, the higher elevations, we'll get a little bit of snowfall. Then that high comes in for the weekend. This starts on Friday. So this is for Friday. The trough is off into the upper Midwest where it will cause thunderstorms and showers in the east. This warm high pressure ridge will draw in warm air from the desert states. So temperatures really begin to warm up on Friday. So we'll step through Friday, Saturday and Sunday with temperatures. On Friday, still east of the divide, just a touch cooler than average, but not by a lot. You can see the warmth out ahead of that low in Western Canada and the Pacific Northwest. Then it begins to spread east Saturday. So here's Friday, here's Saturday. Notice the temperatures in Washington, Oregon, and California though beginning to fall. That's because that upper level low comes into the West Coast. So by Sunday, temperatures really drop in Las Vegas and Los Angeles and San Francisco, while across the Canadian Rockies, the Canadian Prairies, and the Northern and Central Rockies, we're gonna have a nice warm up. So for Derby weekend, pretty warm, very spring-like. Then by Sunday, that upper level low is about between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Now we've always talk, been talking about one thing we haven't had this spring is we have not had one of these lows cut off and slowly move through the West. They've been coming through quickly, not really offering much of a chance for upslope, especially in the drought areas. They've been trending more North and moving through quickly. That's why the heavier precipitation has been up here lately, because they come off the coast, move quickly, and go this way. Notice there's a pinching of the low wanting to take place right here, and this is gonna be the million dollar question next week. Does it cut off? So the southerly flow that really develops ahead of this system for the weekend, pumps in not only warm air, but enough instability that afternoon and evening showers and thunderstorms are going to be forming in that flow coming up out ahead of it. So this is for Saturday. So by late Saturday afternoon, showers and thunderstorms in the Great Basin, across Utah into western Colorado, into New Mexico here, even northern areas of Arizona. Because the low moving slowly has time to draw moisture into it. Again, time is really critical, the time function here. These systems, if they slow down, they have the opportunity to draw moisture in. If they just move through too quickly, you have moisture starved, low pressure systems. So this is Saturday. Sunday, we see a little bit of an eastward shift, 
of where the showers and thunderstorms going. Western slope of Colorado, southern Utah here. You're going to get into some spring showers and thunderstorms. You could use them there and you're going to get them as we get into Sunday and due to the slow movement, probably going into Monday as well. So it'll be a warm weekend, but there will be afternoon and evening thunderstorms for some of you, especially west of the Continental Divide, getting more along and east of the divide as we get into Sunday afternoon and evening. So that gets us through the weekend. Then as we get into early next week, this is where that upper level low is going to be on Monday. It barely moves. So from Sunday to Monday, it just is still in the Great Basin, just northwest of, let's say, Page, Arizona. And it's still together, but it's wanting to pinch off and get cut off. We also have a little complicated pattern here with an upper level low getting cut off in the Ohio area. And uh, this is a situation where if you get two cutoffs, then when you get these cutoff lows, they meander. And it's hard to kind of figure out where they drift because they meander. When they lose the guidance system, so to speak, of the jet stream, they wobble. Cutoff lows wobble. And where they wobble is where the better precipitation chances are going to be. They could wobble in your area. They could wobble out of your area. But it is looking more and more likely that this low will get cut off and will spin around the Great Basin and the Central and Southern Rockies throughout most of next week. But there's also going to be the interactions with this closed low in the Midwest. So think of like two eddies spinning off a stream and going off to the side. For you fishermen there on a big river, you'll see an eddy break off from the main flow and then kind of go along the shore. This is kind of what's going on here. So let's compare where we are, like what we've been doing all week with the long range modeling and seeing if there's agreement or disagreement. If there's better agreement, confidence obviously goes up. More disagreement, confidence goes down. So the European model by Tuesday morning. So this is by Tuesday. Now keep in mind, this is Monday. So by Tuesday, it isn't going anywhere because there is the disconnect right there. The main jet stream then stays across southern Canada. So we've got these two closed low pressure systems detached from the main flow. So what happens after this period is going to be critical. The flow around this low is going to be helping draw that moisture in. So this is for the European model. The AI version, very similar, but a little quicker, a little more east, but also it's cut off. The GFS model has a more north-south elongation of the trough. And this is a common GFS error because what is happening here is the model wants to bring it back up to the flow. Could that happen? Yes. We'll know in a day or two. But this is a more reasonable situation in terms of what usually happens. The Canadian model is much slower, but is mainly cut off as well. The other thing about the GFS model it doesn't have the closed low here. It's got it down into Florida. So the GFS model is a little suspect. At least it's contradicting the other three. But we don't have four out of four yet. We've got three out of four. So next week will prove interesting because if we get that pattern where the low stays back here, you're going to be drawing moisture. So the precipitable water goes from a dry air mass to an air mass that's more moist on both sides of the divide. And you can see there's a little bit of a curl that takes place. And so what it wants to do is it does want to bring that moisture up into the front range from New Mexico through Colorado and Wyoming, all the way up to Montana and eventually the Dakotas due to the fact that it moves slower. So by the time we get late in the weekend and early next week, you just notice this whole area is green and blue. So the precipitable water is above the seasonal average. Now this is important. Seasonal averages in May, in terms of how much water is in the air, is much, much bigger than what you would have in December, January, or February. So this slow moving low is going to be the big story next week. Where is it going to wobble? Will it get cut off or not? If it gets cut off, rain chances go up quite a bit. If it doesn't get cut off, and it gets cut and it gets back into the main jet stream flow and doesn't wobble and meander, well, then the precipitation chances will be much lower. Have yourself a great Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow.